Once again, out there in uh, podcast land, this is Phil Porter along with my my able, very able cohort. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Mary Craven, and uh, we're here with another podcast of a most interesting guest. I'm sure you'll find that to be the case. And uh, so we just enjoy our podcast, and we're go- we're glad to be able to get back into the groove of it. We had to take a little leave of absence, and uh, but now we're back at it, and uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, one of the first things we want to inform you about is who is our sponsor for this podcast, and uh, we've selected the Lawn Maintenance Crew. I'm not sure how many guys or gals are on this crew, but uh, we, we just want to recognize that we think you've been doing a very good job. Our lawn looks nice, tailored, it's green, it's thriving, and uh, so we just take our hats off to you and say thank you much for all that hard work that you put in to keep us looking nice. I'm sure the neighbors and just general public driving by are impressed with how well our lawn looks. And uh, so thank you guys and girls for all that you do. Anything you want to add to that, Mary? No, I just think they're doing a good job. You see them out working all the time and we really appreciate what they do and keeping us looking good. And Amen. Amen to that. Well, before we get into our interview, I want to share a little joke with you. This is a joke I found this morning in the Reader's Digest. And uh, it goes like this. It's a story about a minister who had a most unusual uh, wedding to perform. It was, uh, the wedding was to a very old couple who were uh, quite old and quite frail, and in fact they didn't want to get out of the car to go into the church. So the minister agreed to come out to the car. He got in the front seat on the, on the passenger side, knelt down, and proceeded with the, uh, with the ceremony. And then when he got to the end, he leaned over and, and uh, said to the gentleman, he said, uh, well, now it's customary at this point to kiss the bride. And the old man looked at him and said, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> he was just too tired. <laughs> okay. Funny. Yeah. How did he kneel down in the car? That'd be interesting. Well... Well, I could see it in my that car. That made an unusual picture in my mind, too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, very unusual. <laughs> so, so hey, our guest is someone that I'm sure you all know. She's been here a long time and has been involved in a lot of activities, and uh, we appreciate her participation in the Friendship Village family. And uh, her name is Sonia. So Mary, Mary, you're going to start us off with some questions. All you? right. Sonia Johansson. Sonia. She is living here at Friendship Village. How long have you lived here? 25 and a half years. 25 wow. and a half years. I think you get one of the top <laughs> for being here one of the longest. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. I think Lois Marsh has been here about three months longer than yeah. I have. Pretty oh. close, pretty close. <laughs> does, she, does she remind you of that too? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> we lived in the same duplex for a while. Oh, a duplex at the beginning. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, I, I know we'll find this interview very interesting uh, over the years you've lived here, plus before that. So, to interview, um, okay, you were born in Montana. Okay, and lived there till you were... Till I was about four and a half, five years old. And then we moved to the island of Trinidad. Trinidad, Trinidad. wow. Whoa. And I lived there till I was about 10. And then we moved to Puerto Rico. Oh my God. What did your father do? He was a civil engineer. And a he civ- worked for the Army Engineers. Wow. Oh. And when we left Puerto Rico, the war had just gotten over, the Second World War. And my grandfather was dying, so Dad wanted to go back to Montana to be with his dad until he passed. So we were there until I was. 16, I guess. Mm-hmm. 
And then we moved to Paris. Well, first we moved to Orleans, France, and then to move to Paris. What was the first town? Orleans? Orleans, uh, France. Oh, both of them were in France. Wow. Okay. The second one was Paris. I got that one. I didn't okay. know what the first one was. Orleans. And uh, I had actually finished most of my schooling by correspondence because we moved so much we never were in the same place. So I had plenty of credits to graduate uh, when we were still in Orleans. But when we found out we were moving to Paris, they actually had this high school there. So I decided, well, I couldn't take typing and I couldn't take chemistry very well by correspondence. And I couldn't get a class ring, so I guess I'd go back to school. Right. <laughs> So I did that, and in the process, while we were waiting for school to start, uh, the army bus came and picked up my three brothers, or came to pick them up. And my father, we were the beginning of the line, so my father invited the guys in for breakfast because they had to leave so early in the morning. The mm. breakfast wasn't ready <laughs> at the PX. No. Anyway, I, then I met him and uh, knew my husband for probably a couple of months before I got back on the bus to go to school. <laughs> okay. You took a two-month vacation from school. Right. <laughs> to hang out with you. Okay. So he was in that group that came for breakfast. Right. There were two of them. Two they of had them. a 75 passenger bus. Mm -hmm. And they must have picked up 40 of us kids, but we were the beginning of the line. Mm -hmm. it's a great big, huge bus. So it was as big as most of the streets in Paris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we wobbled. It took two hours to get to school. Wow. Oh, gosh. That's why they had to get there so early. So uh, I thought this guy was kind of a neat guy, and I decided I'd marry him. <laughs> Did he know that? <laughs> well, he asked me first. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, are you about 18 at this time? I was 18. 18. <laughs> and my mother looked at me and she scowled and she says, you sure you want to do that? And I said, yeah. She says, well, you think about all the dirty socks that your brothers have and all the dirty underwear. And if you want to wash his stuff all the time, you can say yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mother. So we got married, and we lived there for another year after we were married. In Paris? He, yeah, he was in the service. Okay. Is he in the Army? Yeah. Okay. What was his name? Harry Douglas Johansson. Oh, okay. Only if that could get confusing, too, because I have a brother named Doug. Mm-hmm. Uh. So, uh... We couldn't have two Dugs, so my folks called him Joe for Johansson, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, I couldn't stand Harry. I thought that was a gunky name. So now he's a local French national, I mean, born and raised in France, right? Pardon? <laughs> he's, a, he's a naturally born French person. No, he was born in Laborde City. Oh, he was in the he army. Was in the army. Driving the school oh, bus. Oh, in the army for the for America. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Okay, I thought he was stationed in Paris. Stationed in Paris, driving okay. the school bus. All right. So after we lived there for a year, we came back to the states. He decided he wasn't going to stay in the army, so we came back and I met his folks, and we went up because my folks were coming back for a vacation to Montana to meet all my other Montana people, and <laughs> he got a job and stayed there for two years. Mm -hmm. And we had a daughter while we were there, and he wanted to come back home, so we came back uh, to visit again, and he got a job and stayed there. <laughs> he didn't have a hard time getting jobs, did he? No, he didn't. What line of work was he in? Um, he was a trucker. He was a trucker, yeah. yeah. He'd been motor pool driving okay. the bus, you know. But he loved to drive trucks and he just liked to drive. Yeah, there's always a need for truckers too. Right. So you settled then where? So we went to La Porte City. Okay. Okay. And um, we had another daughter and everything was going very nicely. And one day the 
mayor came up to me, I didn't know, I was uptown doing something, and he says, we're going to open an office uptown. They've never had one. And we're going to have to have somebody answer the telephone. Come on, bring your knitting, and let's have you answer the telephone. <laughs> so I said, okay. Well, I got up there and never did have time to fool around much with answering the telephone. Hmm. But I got a lot of things done in the Port City. <laughs> And had a great time with six years as the mayor. As the mayor for six years, wow. Wow. And got lots of things fixed, got the swim pool fixed and got the roads fixed and paved 40 blocks of pavement and put in a bunch of storm sewer, all this good stuff that you have to do. You got in and found out what town. the city needed. I did. And <clears throat> we even started garbage service mm -hmm. way back then. We had a recycling program okay. in 1970. So that was kind of fun. I bet and you then, had to raise taxes. Pardon? You had to raise taxes? No, I lowered the taxes. Oh. I just figured all that I work. did all that stuff and I lowered the taxes. Well, yeah, that's amazing. It, no, it really wasn't because nobody had really been paying much attention to it. And they had things like uh, the guys didn't have any place to put their tools, so they were buying new tools all the time. So I bought a garage and put the stuff in a garage. And, you know, it's amazing what you can do with things like that. Did you have a good group working with you? That people were super great. And they tried to tease the guy that uh, was my street worker. Yeah. And I said, you leave him alone. And he said, you leave her alone. <laughs> okay, you looked out for each other. <laughs> right. Oh. And... You know, he'd get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go plow snow, so it'd be all off Main Street, mm -hmm. the car, the business people couldn't park. Sure. And somebody really was trying to give him heck for going home at noon. And I gave them heck, because mm -hmm. they didn't know he got up at 3 o'clock in the right. morning. Right, he already put in many hours. God. So after six years... So then, I took a year off and... Um, really campaigned all over Blackhawk County because I didn't really know anybody in Blackhawk County. Mm -hmm. I knew one lady in Laporte, Martha Nash, or in Waterloo, Martha Nash, because she's a Girl Scout leader and I was a Girl Scout Laporte person. Mm -hmm. So I thought this is going to be quite of a job, but Camille Hogan took me under her wing and introduced me to the whole world, and we won the election. Mm-hmm. So, for 12 years, I was a Black Oak County supervisor. All right. You just a, walked right into these jobs, didn't you? I did. I never started to do anything on my own. I was a classmate of Camille Hogan. Oh, you were? Yes. Oh. She's a neat lady. Yeah. Anyway, then my husband and I decided my folks lived out in Washington State at the time on Camino Island. We decided we were going to go out and build a house out there, so we bought 10 acres out there. Mm -hmm. And we didn't build a house because we discovered we could build a house, but we couldn't afford the taxes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we came back here, and I got elected to the board again because mm -hmm. they were having trouble with the jail. And they had all these people that they wanted to hire for the jail. And so I sat down and took a plan of the jail and what was going to go where and figured out how many people had to go in each spot and cut their plan down to about, well, I must have cut off 40 people, which the sheriff was absolutely f furious with. Yeah. But after they got to working with that group, they said, you know, it's a good thing we didn't have more people. I don't know where we'd have put them. We'd yeah. have fallen all over each other. <laughs> so anyway, that was a fun job. Mm -hmm. So then I retired in 1997, and I moved. No, I retired in 1998. and moved here in 1997. And was your husband with you when you moved here? Or? My first husband died when he was 45 years old. Okay. And my girls were 16 and 18. Okay. So I was single for three years, and then I married a Buns. Mm-hmm. Who was first a farmer, and then he bought an appliance store, and then his first wife, who was my really good friend, mm -hmm. um, 
died from cancer. And somehow or the other, our kids got us together. Okay. We never quite figured that one out, but that's... And they'd started school together, mm -hmm. so they knew each other, and they've always get, been good friends. So we were married then for 39 years. Wow, that's a good long time. So, yeah. But he, actually, he went to Deers after, before his wife died, because he needed the insurance mm -hmm. for her. So he worked there for 10 or 11 years, and then retired. Mm -hmm. And we decided we were going to do this crazy craft business. So between the two of us, for 14 years, he cut wood and I painted it. Okay. <laughs> that was kind of fun. But then we moved in here. Yeah. And for the last two years, when we were living over in the cottage, we used the garage as kind of a wood shop. Mm -hmm. oh. It was fun. So as a result, I've had a very blessed life. Yes, you have. A very busy one. You've traveled here and there and everywhere. And um, your girls, do they live around here? Um, the two biological girls, one lives in Eddyville and the other one lives in Urbana. Mm -hmm. But I count Ed's three girls as mine, too. Okay, right. And two of them are in Idaho and one's in Des Moines. Okay. And they're coming this weekend. Mm -hmm. All of them? Um, the one from Idaho can't come. She's got a problem right now. But the rest of them will be here oh. because the oldest girl's husband died. And she's bringing his ashes back for burial. So, And she loves it here. But she moved out to Idaho because that's where her oldest son lived. And there's three grandchildren there. And you have to be with the grandchildren. Oh, yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> so how many grandchildren do you have with all five girls? Uh, let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven, seven grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Good, good. So you have company a lot. Uh, <laughs> not a whole lot, but we really enjoy it when we come. Yes. And my brother and sister-in-law from Wisconsin come a couple times a year, too. Mm -hmm. So you lived in one of the cottages with your husband, or with Ed? At first. Mm -hmm. And we just moved into the cottage because they made a deal with us and said, if you move into the cottage now, we'll give you the very first choice of the cottages in the, or the apartments in the Cove. Mm -hmm. Now, Ed was six foot four. Yeah, he was a big guy. He died. weighed 280 pounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm no little skinny little bitty thing. The two of us in that four by six bathroom would have knocked each other's teeth out. Yeah. So we had to have two bathrooms. So the cold apartment was wonderful. Mm. <laughs> and that's where you're at now? That's where I'm still at. Yeah. And it used to be a two bedroom apartment, but it turned into a one bedroom apartment that also has a walk in closet mm -hmm. and an office. Okay. There you are. So what are you involved in here? Well, I'm slowly getting out of everything, but I'm left with the craft case. Yes. And want everybody to know if they ever have gently used things that they'd like to place somewhere else, just call me and I'll sell them in the craft case. Mm -hmm. And I've had slippers, walnut, or wallets, well, purses. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a... a Rihanna that I'm going to put in now there. There's a it's a beautiful wool cape thing that I probably put in next month. Um, it's too soon yet. It's too hot. But uh, there's all kinds of jewelry. There's pictures. There's dish towels. There's dish cloths. Anything imaginable in that case. Mm -hmm. and they just keep selling them out. Or well, do you have th about three cases down there now? I've got three down there now, mm -hmm. and I've got one more coming, I hope. Yes. And if somebody just is walking along and they'd like to see something in the case more, just they could me. just call you. Okay. I'm right upstairs over the cases. It doesn't take me long to get down there. All right. And I'm more than happy to do that. You bet. Okay. But I was the auxiliary treasurer for 22 years. <laughs> uh, I've been on the foundation board mm -hmm. since a year after I came here. 
I was treasurer for Republican women for 20-some years. Wow. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, treasure stuff seems to stick to it me seems for some to reason. You like to work with money. <laughs> well, I don't know about money, but I like numbers. And when I was first elected, it was so long ago, 1970, that was back in the bra burning days, mm -hmm. and there were no women. No. I mean, there are 956 cities in the state of Iowa, and there were 11 female mayors. So, and they were mostly uh, 10 and 20 people. Mm -hmm. oh. So, you know, everything I did was with a bunch of guys. Yeah. And the funny part was, when I first started, I had had the guy, pretty much guys, the, um, the whole 10 of cities in the county uh, together to meet just so we could talk about what was going on in the cities. Okay, yeah. And so I, one of them that I knew pretty well from here, uh, I asked, what's the wrong with these guys? You know, they're just so kind of standoffish. They don't want, you know, I'm just getting strange vibes. Yeah. And he says, they're scared. They don't know what to do with you. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I says, what do you mean? He says, they don't know if you're going to laugh, or if you're going to cry when they say something. <sighs> they don't know if what, they should open a door or not open a door. Or you're going to yell at them if they do. <laughs> I said, for heaven's sakes. You know, I'm not anybody that's very <laughs> astounding or anything. So I went home and I talked to my beauty operator and found out there's some silver hairspray you can get. So I got the silver hairspray, went and brought three kind of motherly looking suits and went back and after about two months they were used to the hairspray and the motherly looking suits and I looked sort of motherly so they could relate to me in a motherly way. Okay. <laughs> and everything worked wonderfully. Yeah. And it worked so wonderfully that the last year that I was the mayor, they um, I was on the League of Iowa Municipalities board, mm -hmm. and they got together and they decided I was going to be their next president. Well, I was kind of surprised, and I said to the one, the mayor from Swisher was the guy that was telling me this, and I said, what on earth did you guys do that for? You know you're going to get a whole lot of hassle, because this was back in the bra burning days with all kinds of funny stuff. And I said, they're just going to give you a really bad time with a female. And he says, well, I'll tell you if you don't get mad. I said, well, I never thought I'd get mad. I won't get mad. He said, are you sure you won't get mad? Of course I won't get mad. You sure? <laughs> no. I'm getting mad. He said, well, we forgot you were a woman. <laughs> he says, you know more about the rest of what's going on in cities than any of the rest of us. So we just figured you'd be the right one. Well, goal accomplished, right? Right. Yeah. I said, I'm not here as a woman. I'm here as a mayor. Right. Yeah. Uh, huh. <laughs> well, you broke new ground in some See, of those places. In a whole lot of places. Yes. Yeah. Which is good. Good. Right. Mm. You paved the way for other women to... to um, now, do you know how many women mayor there are in yeah, Iowa? That was my question. Uh, I don't know exactly how many, but it's almost half. That's come a long way. It's yeah. come a long way. Poor. Okay. So, um, I was thinking of a question, uh, like, uh, just as kind of, or we're nearing the end here, just as kind of a summary of, of your life, but could you put into words maybe one or two lessons that you figure you've learned from your life? Well, I've learned lots and lots and lots of lessons. Okay. But I think maybe my mother taught me to be a good friend. Oh, all right. And that's probably been the guiding light I guess you'd call it, of my life, mm -hmm. because that's what I do. I I have never had a goal 
driven to be a certain thing. As you said, things just happen to me. Right. And um, kindness is important. So this opened some doors probably in your life along the you way. probably did. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's why they come and ask you to do these things, because they know you have a good reputation. Well, that could be. No, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And well, they know you're I enjoyed worker. people a lot, and what was so funny, I never figured out how I ended up in politics, because I used to be really shy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I thought, here I am, what am I doing? <laughs> but I like it. Yes. You were at the right place at the right time. Of course, I, I always yes. liked people. Yeah. That's good. number one. That's good. And this has been a great place to live. That's what I was oh. going to ask next. Um, what do you like about Friendship Village? I like everything about Friendship Village. The people are great. The food's wonderful. Um, I was kind of a gourmet cook. In fact, my husband, first husband said that we'd been married for 12 years before we ever had the same thing twice. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> so, I enjoy the food, and I enjoy the people, and I wish I was, could be more active, but unfortunately all the things I like to do are sitting down. Yeah. Well, activities, uh, we have to pick and choose now, and they aren't always what we did many, many years ago, but we can change. We can do activities that are fun that we can sit down. That's right. We didn't have time to sit down lots no. when we were younger. Well, you know, this is kind of like the interview, and you get to the end of it, and you think, gosh, we could we could go and do part two. Mm -hmm. There's still so much we could get into. Right. And, uh, a very... Very interesting life you've led. Yes, I thank you for sharing. I have been very blessed, as I told you. Very, thank you very for sharing blessed. with us. I've had and some very tough things with my life. I, my first husband was my very complete love, and that loss was a big ache. Yeah. Left a big gap in your life for a while. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But somehow those girls decided that. We ought to get together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they wanted another family. They didn't want you to be alone. Yeah. Right. And Ed was very good to me, too. Mm -hmm. So I was very fortunate. Well, listen, we're going to close this out. And uh, uh, thank you again, Sonia, for coming and sharing. And as we like to do each time, we're going to close with this. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. Bye for now. Goodbye. Goodbye.